Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an Assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week and these are prepared by the Assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hello and welcome to this workshop. My name is Adnan Ahmed and today we'll be learning how to create our very own e-commerce store using Django, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We will also learn how to use the PayPal API to process our payments. Before we dive into this workshop, let me tell you about the assembly. The assembly is a smart lab based out of IN5 since December 2014. We have conducted over 300 workshops since then. These workshops are divided into three categories. Hack, which is embedded systems, IoT and hardware. Code, which is software projects which relate to APIs, frameworks and applications. Finally, we have data science, which is related to advanced topics such as AI and machine learning. The target audience for these workshops are students, professionals and entrepreneurs, but most importantly, anyone who is eager to learn about technology. We focus on smart technology and its practical applications. You can keep in touch with us through our forum at members.theassembly.ae. We are also active on our social media. You can follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Now let me give you an overview of today's workshop. We'll take a look at what an e-commerce store is and why we're using Django as the backend for today's workshop. We'll also talk about the PayPal API and then take a look at the steps required to build a store. So what is an e-commerce store? An e-commerce store is a business model which involves transactions taking place on the internet. Stores that sell their products online are called e-commerce stores. For example, Amazon is one of the most popular online stores in the e-commerce industry. So why are we using Django? Django is a high-level open source Python web framework that enables rapid deployment of secure and maintainable websites. Django takes care of much of the hassle of web development. Now let's take a look at PayPal's payment API. The API provides simple payment processing for common business needs including PayPal payments, direct credit card and debit card payments, and authorization, capture and refunds. And now onto the steps. So first we create a template website, then set up the backend, add functionality, and then add guest user functionality. And then finally we'll integrate the PayPal API to it. The first step would be to install Django. You can do that by doing the command pip install Django. And then you can just write Django. And this should create a new folder on your desktop. So if you can see that, there's a new folder on the desktop. Let me just place it on the second monitor. All right. So this one has another file called e-commerce and uh, something called manage.py. If you open e-commerce, you can see another bunch of Python files that we will be needing soon. So we can go back to the command prompt, go into the folder, and type Python. Okay, and now if you open this folder again, you'll see another folder that was created called store, which has more Python files that we'll be needing. So what we can do is in store, we can create a new file called templates. And in that, we can create one more form store. All right. So now what we can do is open this folder, our e-commerce main folder from Visual Studios. Now we can open this folder in our Visual Studio code. Now let's go ahead and do that. Five. So if you open up the folder and go to store templates and store over here, we can create our HTML files. So new file, let's call it main.html and create another one. Okay. 
Now what we need to do is go to settings.py and our installed apps, we need to add this store.apps.config and let's just save that. Then we have to create our views. So go to views.py, create our views here. So we'll have three views, one for store, one for cart, and one for the checkout page. So let's pass on request. Now for our next two views, we can just copy paste this and change what we need. So this one will be cart. And save. Now we have to create a file called urls.py in our store folder. So what we did over here is create a URL pattern. So the empty string means it is in the home directory and uh, we created one for cart and checkout as well. And uh, we're importing from our views. So in our store folder, we're imp importing from views.py. So that's this file. What we need to do now is go to our urls.py that is in the e-commerce uh, folder and uh, type in path. And then what we can do is go to cart and just put in a tag. So h3. Uh, it says cart page. And then we can do that for all the other HTML files. And we can open up our terminal and cd into the folder e commerce and now we can open up the website. So it'll be 127. Okay, so that's the store page and we go to slash checkout, checkout page, and last we can check out, and that's a cut. Next thing we have to do is set up a static file. So we can open up our folder, and here we can create another folder called static. So now you can see, our, if I refresh this. Should be seeing a start folder. So we can open up our CSS file, create a new one, and call it main.css. Our CSS file has been placed properly, so let's just give it a background color. So color it. If we save that, and then what we have to do is set up our static files in our settings reply. So we can open that. Under this, we can provide and we can import OS. <coughs> we can go back to our store and we can load a static file. Now we can save it and let's it. go back to our website. It was the home page. Refresh it and see the red background. So our CSS file is set up properly. What we need to do now is set up our images file. So we can just download an image. So let's just do and we'll put it in our static files. So Save it as card. Okay, now that we downloaded our image, let's just go to our images folder and see that. Okay. Let's open up and we'll link our image to the store. So you can just do an image. If we save that, go back to our website. 
refresh and you should see our contract okay now we set up all our static files now what we can do is add something like a nav bar so i've gone ahead and written the code for that uh, the code will be in the description so you can just go and look at the github link so i named it uh, the assembly store and i copied the link from uh, the bootstrap cdn website and here's the header for the nav bar so if i save this and also what we can do is add uh, our inheriting so we can inherit from main into all of our uh, HTML files. So let's just, before we load static. Let's remove the background for now. So we have an HT type and then we can just end block on. So we can follow the same template for all of our pages. So let's just copy it. Check out, paste. So our config set. Uh, we can remove the cart image. We keep it here on this way. So let's just save all these files and go back to our website. So if we do a refresh, we see we have our navbar folder and the title has changed to the assembly store. So if we go to slash checkout, we have the same navbar because we're inheriting from the main, and the same should happen when we do cart. All right. So Now we can actually configure the navbar. So this is from the Bootstrap website. Uh, we can just save this, go back to our page, and you see our navbar here. So now we can also we can remove our red background. It's pretty much okay. So now what we do not need is a search bar, a uh, drop down and a link. So we can just uh, modify that in our main.html. So I'll just change our light color to a dark one. Refresh, you can see that it turned black. Now we don't need all of the functionalities of the navbar, so we can just remove them. And finally, our code will look like this. Uh, we added our image to our navbar so what we can do next is scale down the image so our navbar is not as big we can go to main.css and update all our values so we have uh, the desired size and all that so if you go back to our website and refresh you can see we have our dark background and also we included this red color to indicate how many items we have so that's our navbar is complete now that the navbar is fixed we can go back and start making changes in our store.html so over here we can create a navbar in our So if we save this, go back to our home page and refresh. We can delete our header file and the image source for now. Okay, I finished the uh, store.html just for the template. Uh, also, we need to download an image called placeholder.png. So let's just do a black background. So this would right. And the output. So if we hard refresh, okay, there seems to be an error. Now that we finished our store homepage, uh, we can do our cart and checkout so i have written the cart page so let me just pull this to the side okay now that you see our page is divided into two rows and each row is uh, 12 columns long so there is no gap between uh, each column and then we've added a button for checkout and for continue shopping uh, and then two buttons for increasing and decreasing the quantity um, these are images that we uh, downloaded and imported into our file called static uh, arrow up.png and arrow down.png. Uh, all these images are in a static and uh, images folder. So then we can uh, move out and check check out. Now let's go on to the checkout page. So the checkout page, uh, let's just see how it looks first. Check out. So the page has a form to enter your name, your email, and your shipping information. A uh, back to cart button, a continue button, and the order summary. So let, let's just break down the code. So our, our page is divided into two columns. So how Bootstrap is doing it is it's dividing our page into 12 columns, but if you write it as six, so half the page is going to be uh, reserved for one block and the other half will be reserved for another block. So we're uh, creating a form over here called form wrapper. And 
then we are doing required classes and we're getting name and the placeholder and the email and then we're getting the shipping information and then on our second column we are adding a button for a uh, back to cart and then uh, we are going to display one singular item as a placeholder uh, we just saw this here so we place one item here and then next we'll take a look at how we can uh, make this more dynamic what we're doing next is creating our models a model is basically like a database so over here we're creating a customer model a product an order and order item and shipping address so each of these are defined over here in each class so we have a user a name and an email for customer and the self so if you call this function it's just going to return the name of the user and then for product we have name price digi digital and image so digital is a field that is going to define if our project uh, if our product is a digital product that will require shipping or not and then name price and image says what it is and uh, for image uh, we're going to have to use the image url so we created a, a decorator uh, we use the property decorator and created a function uh, under that called image url so uh, we're going to try to get the image url if we don't succeed at that we're going to just uh, return uh, an empty string so it's not going to display anything and then in our order we have a customer that is a foreign key for our customer table and then the date ordered which is just going to be uh, the current time that the order was placed and then a complete status and a transaction id and then uh, same as before we're just going to uh, use a stringify function to return self id so it doesn't give us a jump value if we ever call the uh, class and then in order item we have a product that is a foreign key from the products table an order which is a foreign key from the orders table and uh, the quantity which is an integer value and the date added which is the date time value and then in shipping address we have customer order address city state zip code and date added and then uh, out of these the first two that is customer and order are foreign keys to the table's customer and order and address is just going to be a character field uh, same thing with city state uh, zip code and the data is going to be data field and then we're going to do the same thing and call this uh, function uh, and it's going to return the address if someone calls shipping address so then what we did next was go to the admin.py and register our customer table our product table our order table our order items table and our shipping addresses so now if we save this now what we need to do is open up our command prompt and make the migration so button manage.py Now that we've called make migrations, we can actually migrate. So, okay. so then we can go ahead and create a super user. Okay. Our super user has been created, so we can open up our website and just go to tabs, use the same link that's 172 and slash admin okay first we need to run a server so that's and we can refresh so now we have administration okay so now you can see our databases that were customers uh, order items orders products and shipping addresses have reached our administration panel so what we can do is create a user and uh, let's just make it the same so uh sorry we'll create a customer not a user so user name actually the same email id so we can see so now you are the customer as well as the administrator once you create a customer we can go and add products so go to products and add product so what the name of the product let's just add 3d printer and price it at 100 digital no and you can choose the file but right now we just leave it as blank and save and then we can just create all our products. Let's add in a digital product. So let's just call it a code, suppose, and price it at 1700. And it's digital, we can write it as yes and save. Now we have five products, let's just add one more. All right, now that our products are added, we can is open up our store.html file and remove these two columns. And then we can just Okay, so now what we did was we removed the other two items and we changed the first one to account for all the products. So this is the for loop, it says for product and products. And then uh, instead of the sample product name, we are going to render our product.name that is from our models. So product and dot name. And then what we're doing next is we are taking the price also from there and we're formatting it to only have 
uh, 2.1. Now we can go to our views.py file and add in products over here. So products. And then update the context dictionary. So we also need to import from our models. So from dot models. Sorry. Okay, let's save this and go back to our website and refresh. All right. Now you can see that our products with all the prices and updated names are printed uh, on the display dynamically. And then what we need to do is add in the images. Now what we need to do is go to our settings.py and add in our media route. So we can save this and yeah, go back to our website and go to our administrator. Now we can go up to our administrative panel and just pick a product, choose a file, and we can do it from any file that you wish to upload. Now, when you upload these files, it will go and get saved to your static images folder. So I have them here. So I am importing for an LED mirror. So open. Okay, now we can save this and go to uh, if we open up our folder over here, you can see that our images are added over here. It's under static, under images, and uh, these are all our images. Let me just open this one. Okay. In our settings file, we have to add another field. So we can just do it after our media root and call it media URL. Save it and go to our urls.py file and import these two things. And then we can attend to the URL patterns that we already have. So URL patterns plus equal to static. Okay. Save this, go back to our store.html and change our thumbnail, change the source to save it. And if we go back to our main website, and refresh and you can see all our items are up here so now what we have to do next is add some functionality and then render them out here as well and in the checkout page so let's go ahead and do that what we need to do next is make the items on our cart and checkout page dynamic so if we go to our cart we can just from here create a for loop so items and we can close here and we need to make all of this dynamic so let's uh, first save it go to our views.py file and update our cart so first we need to check if the user is authenticated so if request dot is So now what we did over here was uh, we created our customer from we saved our customer into the variable customer and his order and uh, if it was created or not so if it wasn't uh, there already we're going to create or we're going to get it and then we'll save it in a variable called items and if the user is not authenticated uh, the items will just be a blank list now we're going to pass this to the context dictionary so items uh, and items then what we can do next is go back to our cart.html and make the changes over here so our source is going to be same thing as before Okay. Um, seems like everything else is okay and we have to change our total later so now what we can do is attach some orders to our customer that we created earlier so go back and start an order so add order for a customer and just give it some random transaction ID. 
save and then if we go to order items and we can add to the order so let's add a foosball table order one and we'll add two save it and let's add like two more products so we'll add food same order and quantity one save it and let's add the last one product let the customer buy a sand table order one quantity one Okay, now our order item has been created. If we go back to our checkout, it's uh, okay. So our price over here has been updated. Our quantity has been updated according to our order, and uh, we have to now change this, the total, and the totals over here. Now to get our totals and the total number of items, let's go back to our file and open use dot by. Sorry, let's open models dot by. So in product we can add in uh, order and in order items we can add a new function and it will be a property decorator def count total let's just pass for now and come down to our order item again add property Back in our okay, we also have to return this so return total. Okay. So now we can use this uh, get total function in our get part total. So So we're looping through our items we're getting the total and then we're going to add all of them and then we can just return total now we can just copy paste the same function and change a little bit it to get our quantity so we can just change get total to and we can save it all right so this has to be item dot get total and we'll just save that and if we go back to our views.py, I added uh, the next context that is order order. So this should work. All right. So now we have a total for each item, the total uh, for our cart, and the total number of items. And, uh, now, if I were to log out, so if I go here and log out and refresh the page, and we'll get an order because local variable order is not referenced. Because when we did it in here, uh, we didn't create an order for when the user is not authenticated. So you can just Create it manually, order equal to it was a dictionary with All right. So now if I go back and refresh, it should show up as zero. So now what you can do is just log back in, go to admin and log in again. Okay, now we can go back to our code and do the same thing. Uh, for checkout.html uh, like we did forgot so first we'll go to views.py and just copy the same thing okay save it go back to checkout.html and update everything over here all that is fine we have product one Save this, go to our website and to our wishlist. We still have the item account because we logged back in, and then we can check out. And okay, I forgot to put in the for loop, so you can just create the for loop from part row. Yeah, okay, in items, and then we can edit right after the diff. Website. All right. Now we have our total number of items, the number for each item, quantity for each item, and the pictures. So everything is done for now. And then we can start adding functionality to, to we can start adding functionality to these buttons to increase and decrease the quantities. And let's uh, start with that. What we need to do next is add some JavaScript. So in our static folder, let's create a new folder called JS. And in that, we can create our file cart.js. 
and now if we go to our main.html we added the script tag to link to javascript file and then in our store.html to our button that was already there add to cart button uh, we just added a data product field and a data action field so uh, on a button on on action add the button will update the cart and we added the class over here so now we can go to our javascript file and update it here and then we can just print it out so console console dot Uh, so the javascript we wrote we are storing update buttons into a variable called update buttons and then we're looping through the length of the update buttons and adding a li event listener for each of those on click and the function is to get the product id and the action so our action was add and the product id will give the number so now we're console.logging uh product id action so if you go back here and let me just refresh and if you click add to cart uh there's the product id and then the action so if i do it again so the product is one uh action is add now what we can do is go to our main.html and uh, store our user in a variable called user so we took the type as text or javascript and uh, we are uh, storing our what type of user our user is so if you go back to our card.js uh, let's remove this and add console.log okay now if user equal to equal to a norm user we can just console it out so console.log okay. right so if you go back to our website and refresh so if we press add to cart, it says user at none and the user is logged in. Now if I were to go and log out, refresh the page again and add to cart. We get user is anonymous and the console log, uh, user is not logged in. Let's just go back and log in again. And, and refresh page. Now what we did was go to our views.py and import JSON response from django.http and we created a function called update item so this will send a json response saying item is added and in our urls.py we added this to the url patterns so that's update item now if you go back to our website and type in uh link slash update underscore item and we should get a json response saying item is added so now we can go back to our file we can go back to our cart.js file and over here instead of having our user just being authenticated and console logging we can just create a new function called update user order and we'll pass in product ID and action and then what we can do is create a new function called update user order Now what we need to do is actually call our CRF, CSRF token. So how we can do that is, let's just put this here, CSRF. Uh, if we open up the documentation, go down and copy this code. You can see, go back to our main.html in our JavaScript tag. Let's just paste it. So let's just fix the indentation. Right, save it go back to our cart so we'll replace this with x hyphen csrf token and hyphen csr token Save this and if we go back to our main 
dot html uh, let's actually change this get cookie to get token so token and here as well we'll save we can go back to our website and if you add to cart and open up this user is logged in right so now that we have the csrf token so now if we go to views.py and go to our update item right before that we have to import our json so after you've done that uh, we updated our update item uh, function so now it loads from request.body and then the product id is uh, set as data uh, product id and action as data action then we're getting the customer product order created order item uh, from get or create and then if action equal to add uh, we're going to increase quantity and if action equal to remove we're going to decrease quantity then we're saving the order and then if we're checking if it is equal to zero if it's equal to zero we're going to delete it from the thing now when we go back to our website and press add to cart for suppose the led mirrors let's press it three times one two three now if we go to our cart we should see the led mirror is here three times okay so that works perfectly now what we're doing is going back to our cart.js and we are going to add add location.reload so it will just refresh our page to update the values reload let's save it now what we need to do is go to views.py and add in uh, update all of our uh, functions over here so we uh, took our old one that we wrote over here for for checkout and pasted it in both the other functions so uh, we added our cart items as well so we have cart items for if the user is authenticated and the user is not authenticated and we're passing it through the context dictionary. we're doing this for every function over here so now if we go to our main.html uh, we can change our cart total uh, to our uh, cart total first which was uh, zero so we can just update that now if we go to our website and back to the home page if i press add to cart you should see it update inside and if i press the cart icon uh, we still see it says 13 over here and even in the checkout page it just says 13. All right Next thing we need to do is add functional functionality to the up and down buttons So we can do that by going to our cart.html and for when we added our images uh, for the up and down arrow we can just add more data. So over here and then we can add the action action equal to add that is for the up arrow button and we need to add an update card so after the change quantity we can add in the update card. save it uh, and then do the same for the down arrow so it's the same with here actually we just copy all this Okay, now we can save it and go back to our store, refresh, and it should be able to update our quantities. In our cart.html, we updated our uh, tags where we had our image. So we added our uh, data product and our data action along with the class for update uh, class, update cart. So if we save this, so we did that for add and remove. Uh, if we save this, go back, uh, hit refresh, and then if we do the up arrow, you can see our total increase, our quantity increase, and even our main total increase. So if we make it down to zero, so that's one and zero, it should remove our item. All right, the next thing we have to figure out is how to uh, remove our shipping information if we only have one digital product. So if we're only going to buy our code, uh, we don't want shipping information because we're not going to ship it anywhere. So what we can do is open up our views.py, uh, actually our models.py, models.py, and in that we can add uh, a new function inside our class order. So it'll check for our shipping and uh, by default it'll uh, make it false and uh, loop through all the items in our order items and if any one of them is not digital, it will uh, make shipping true. Now we have to go to views.py and update it here so it, uh, it's taken care of for the authenticated user uh, with our uh, items but for our uh, for our order and but for our non-authenticated user we have to add it manually over here so we did shipping equal to false uh, same thing for cart and the same thing for checkout uh, we added over here uh, shipping equal to false okay uh, then now we actually have to hide it so if we go to our uh, checkout.html and go all the way down uh, we added our script type uh, JavaScript and if shipping equal to false, uh, which is going to hide our shipping information that was up over here, we had our uh, div called shipping information and then we added a payment button. So there's a button uh, after our PayPal options. So we just, uh, uh, we're going to listen on click. If the submit form is clicked, uh, it will show the button. So by default, it should be hidden. Uh, but already, let's make this hidden. Save it and go to our checkout and refresh. Yes, we don't need this because our class is already hidden so let's save it 
and go to our website if we refresh and our shipping information is there so what happens if we remove all of our items from the cart except the one that doesn't need shipping so we're going on that Now, if we check out, only our name and image will be there. And if we enter it and continue, our PayPal option button should open. And if we open up our console and if we press make payment, it should say payment button fit. All right. So now that we've taken care of that, we can go back to our code and uh, make changes for our payment button. So we can actually add to our JavaScript in our checkout.html. We can save it. And uh, after this shipping, we can just write. Okay, so what we're doing here is uh, if the uh, user is not anonymous, uh, we're going to hide a uh, user info so that was the name and email we already have those so there's no need for that and then we can add uh, in uh, if shipping equal to equal to false and user is not anonymous so that means if there is no shipping and the user is a logged in user so we're going to add the logic to that so we can hide our form wrapper okay and what we do next is just copy paste it control c control v and change form wrapper to payment info payment info the other side and we will remove hidden for our payment info so now so now if we go back uh, i've updated the checkout.html and in our submit form data i added a variable for user form data uh, so its name is null email is null and total is the total that we are getting from here in our TypeScript JavaScript. So I also added this. If shipping equal to false, we can uh, hide the inner HTML. And if user is not anonymous, we can hide the user info uh, HTML part. Uh, and then we added a, a hidden layer over our form wrapper. If uh, shipping equal to false, that means uh, there is no items to be shipped and a uh, user is not anonymous. So user has been found. Uh, then we are removing our hidden layer from our payment info. So we'll uh, be able to see that once we submit the form. And then uh, we're storing our form in a variable called form. And then we're adding a, a event listener. After that, we added an event listener for make payment as well, which we'll call submit form data. And in submit form data, we are going to console log a uh, payment button is clicked. And then we can uh, start uh, taking our data and sending it to the backend. So here we have our, our name, email, and total. Uh, the total we got from the variable right now. Uh, name and email, which is going to set as null until the form is submitted. See, same thing goes for address, city, state, zip code, and country. Uh, and then uh, we've written if shipping is not equal to false, uh, we'll add all the uh, values from the form uh, into shipping info dot uh, whatever the form ID is. Uh, and then finally, if the user is anonymous, we are also going to take in the name and email. Over here, we define shipping info in the variable over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now what we have to do is actually process our order. So if we go back to our views dot by and create a function called the process quest and return JSON response payment submitted and let's turn see if we put off false. Okay, save it. What we did next is go to our views.py and create another function called process order. So it's going to print uh, to, the, uh, to the command prompt of data request body and uh, return JSON response payment submitted. And then if you go to urls.py uh, in store, uh, we added this to our path. So views.process order name process order. Uh, and then if you go to our checkout.html, we are going to send this data to the backend uh, using a post method and the CSRF token. So uh, we're doing it the same as we did in uh, the JavaScript file. And then uh, it should send us back to the store, the main page, after the order has been completed. So let's just save this and take a look at the output. So now we don't have anything in our uh, cart. Let's just refresh it. So our uh, name and email went because we are logged in user. Uh, and then uh, there's no shipping, so it went straight to the PayPal options. So if you press make payment, it says transaction complete. Okay. And it went back to our homepage. Okay. So that's good. Now what we have to do is clear out our output. So our cart is not yet cleared. So we'll go and do that next. We just updated our process order, so uh, now it has a transaction ID. So uh, that's uh, from importing date time. We imported date time data. and then uh, so the transaction ID will be date time dot date time dot now dot timestamp. So we'll just take the current uh, timestamp in the string format. Uh, we have the data from before, and now we're checking if the user is authenticated. If the user is authenticated, then we can just uh, do the same thing as we did before: uh, complete equal false, and then uh, save our total uh, and save our transaction ID to our order dot uh, transaction ID. Uh, now we're checking if our total is equal to order.getCardTotal because uh, if you inspect element and uh, change our total, 
uh, it can cause issues. So now we're just going to confirm it. And uh, if it is, then we can just do uh, order complete equal to true. That means uh, the order uh, completion is done. And then we just want to save it. Uh, after that, uh, if shipping is true, uh, we're going to create uh, our uh, shipping object, shipping address object. So uh, all our variables uh, that are customer order date, uh, I mean, uh, address, city, state, zip code, and country as well. Uh, country. Okay, country. Okay, we save that. That's that. All this is for our authenticated user, and for our non-authenticated user, it's just print out user is not logged in. So if you save this, go back to our website. We have two items in our cart. Uh, one needs shipping, one doesn't. So if you do checkout and put in our address, uh, continue. Make payment. It's just transactions complete. Okay. And we go back to our homepage, our order is reset. If we go to our orders and our transaction ID was three, uh, it says it's completed. So now we can save it and it will also create a new order for us. That is four, it says it's not complete. Okay. Now that that's done, we can uh, now do the functionality for the non logged in users. And now what we did is we updated our, uh, after we did our utils, we updated our main.html. Uh, where we added our get cookie function. So over here, our cookie is going to take, it's going to be stored in the cookie array from the document and it's going to split it for an equal to sign. Uh, and then uh, this is the same cookie we're using in our utils.py and our views.py. So if we go now to mod, if we go to cart.js, uh, you can see that we updated some stuff over here. So we added a function called add cookie item. Uh, if the action is add, that is if we click uh, either the increase from the cart page or uh, from the home page, uh, and if it's not in the cart, so it's undefined, it will uh, add a new item to the dictionary and uh, make quantity one, or else it'll uh, update it and the same thing for remove. And then what we did is in urls.py, no, uh, yeah, in the checkout.html. Uh, in our JavaScript tag, we did. Oh, let's just remove this. Okay. In our submit form data, uh, we did our. Uh, we were doing our uh, fetch with post, and then if uh, after the data is sent, we are going to console.log success with the data that was sent, and uh, it's going to show up a uh, show a pop-up called uh, transaction completed, and then it's going to empty the cart. And uh, a document or cookie will. Uh, update the cart for the users that are not logged in and we will be redirected to our uh, home page and then after that what we did is we added our uh, paypal integration so from straight from the paypal website we just uh, copy pasted it uh, and uh, we added the script tag and then the uh, script itself so uh, we changed our uh, to amount over here to a parse flow total and uh, two fixed so that means it has only two decimal places and then uh, we are going to submit our form data after the process has been approved. So let's just go test this one last time, once for uh, a logged in user and then once for a non-logged in user. So right now we're logged in, we can do add to cart, add to cart. So we have four items in the cart and if you check out, add in the address and continue. Now you'll see a PayPal option open up or a debit card. Uh, using the debit card or credit card option, uh, you'll have your, you'll need to have your uh, website SSL certified, but uh, PayPal works. So here's the pop-up. And uh, you can create a uh, sandbox PayPal accounts from the PayPal website itself uh, to test these accounts. So I made one with $5,000 and I am just going to yeah, pay now. So you can create two accounts, one for business and one for personal to test. Uh, in You can take your business accounts information and you have to paste it over here in the client ID. So over here, it's going to be written SB. You can just uh, remove the SB and uh, paste that there. So now that it's done for our uh, logged in user, we can go here and log out and refresh the page. Now we're not logged in. So add to cart, add to cart. Uh, so if we open the control, uh, the console and go to application and cookies. Uh, we'll, we can see over here, we created our cookie card and it's saving the uh, ID of the product and the quantity as well. So now if we go to log, uh, check out, so we're gonna check out just for something email.com and continue you see our paypal option show up click on paypal again with a sandbox account we can just uh, pay this so pay now and we go back to our home page and our card is empty if we go to our site and 
uh, log in again. Go to our orders and the second last one because the last one is the new one. Orders. Yeah, uh, order number six, we can see that it's completed and the transaction ID is of the current date and time. So that's it for today's workshop. We learned how to create our very own e-commerce store using Django, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where people can buy products either as a logged in user or as a guest, and even pay for it using the PayPal API. If you enjoyed, consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And to stay up to date with more of our content, you can follow us on our social media channels. Thanks for watching.